So now that we've talked about fork join task, it's time to talk about the key methods in a couple of subclasses that are related to fork join task. In fact, they extend it. And this is this discussion will cover recursive action and recursive task. And you'll see that for the vast majority of uses of the fork join framework, we're typically using recursive action or recursive task rather than fork join task directly. And you'll see why that is. Although having said that, you also have to have to be aware of the fact that even though your computations are typically implemented in subclasses of fork join tasks, when you fork stuff, you typically get back fork join tasks and you work with fork join tasks by forking and joining it, even though you're actually working on instances of sub subclasses, recursive action or recursive task. So let's first start by talking about the key methods, or really key method, in the recursive action. So recursive action is a subclass that extends fork join task and does not return a result. So if you take a look, you'll see that the compute method on recursive action doesn't return anything. And here's what it looks like. So the compute method is defined as an abstract void method. And abstract void means this method must be implemented by subclasses, and it returns nothing. So by defining this to be implemented by subclasses, that means that you have to subclass from recursive action if you want to go with this form of asynchronous processing. And compute will then be overridden to perform the task main computation. And I think as I've talked about before, because of the fact that the fork join framework came prior to Java 8, these methods are not, in fact, or this, this class is not a functional interface, and therefore you can't use lambda expressions. So it's a little bit more unwieldy than we might like, but that's what you have to live with. Now, the compute method is typically written in a very canonical way. Um, and what it does is the compute method will typically take a look at the work it's been given in the object that is a subclass implementation of recursive action and it figures out whether it should split things up into yet smaller subtasks that are then forked to run in parallel. So that's one of the things that compute will do. It'll figure out whether it should break things up further or not. If it decides that it's got something that's small enough to run sequentially, it just goes ahead and computes it. Otherwise, it splits things up into smaller pieces. And then, after those smaller pieces are done, and they can be done, keep in mind, they can be done by other threads in the worker pool, the fork join worker pool, then compute will typically join all these smaller subtasks back together again, and then it will return. But the key point with compute for recursive action is there is no return value that comes back. So if there's results that have to go someplace, they typically have to be stored in some other way, like they could be stored in an array that's visible to recursive action. And there's lots of different ways to do that. And the way this works under the hood is that there's an exec method that's called underneath the hood by the fork join pool. And you can see that the exec method is a final method, so it doesn't get extended by anybody. It's, it's one and only implementation. And when exec is called by the fork join pool framework, it calls compute. And you'll notice that this particular method does not store the result anywhere. There's no result of compute. So it's a method that has no return value. It's a void, in other words, which is what you need when you do recursive action. So that's recursive action. Recursive action is used for either computations that do not require any results to be composed together, or we're going to compose them together through some other means. It's often useful, however, to compose results back together again as the subtasks finish. That's very much like the program that you're doing for assignment 3A, where you're going ahead and forking off these child tasks to go off and do image transformation or counting the number of image, images on a page or crawling the page or whatnot. So in some cases, we do, do, we do want results back. So in that case, you may want to use recursive tasks. The recursive task extends fork join task. And the main difference is it has a compute method that does, in fact, return a value. And that value is a generic value that's provided when you instantiate an instance of fork join task. And if you look at the programming assignment for assignment 3B, 3A rather, you'll see that we have a bunch of 
classes that extend fork join task and they instantiate things with either either integers or images or something like that. Okay, so once again, compute works the same way. It, it either performs the operation sequentially if it's small enough, or it goes ahead and splits the work up into smaller subtasks that compute will fork to run in parallel in other, potentially in other threads in the fork join pool. And in this particular case, the results of these smaller subtasks are joined together to make a merged result. So unlike recursive action, where the things were not joined together with recursive tasks, they are, in fact, joined together. And this is kind of what it looks like under the hood. There's another exec method that's defined here. Exec is what's actually called by the fork join pool to execute the task. As it, you can see, exec calls compute. I exec, by the way, is a template method from the Gang of Four book. So when exec is called, notice it's final, so you can't change it. It calls out to a hook method. And the compute hook method, which is what you define as a subclass of recursive task, does the computation. And you can see it returns a result. And that result is stored for subsequent access. And that subsequent access is going to be when you join the result. When you join with this task, that's going to be passed back. The result will be passed back to the join call. So for assignment 3A, think very carefully. When you look at assignment 3A, especially the, the task that's going to sort of count the number of images that you've been crawling around and discovering as you look at each of the pages, when you take a look at that, please um, think to yourself, join is returning an integer. How do I use that integer to, to get the results, to get the count correct? And so if you think about that, you'll discover that it, it's pretty cool how it works. That's just a little hint. OK, so that's the end of the discussions of the key methods of recursive action, recursive tasks. So the key point to be aware of here is that in practice, recursive task is probably the most common way to use fork join tasks. So you'll typically extend recursive task and fill in the various pieces.